If we're going to crucify our flesh, we can't have our allegiance be to the Republican Party. It has to be to Christ Jesus. Hey everyone, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, this is going to be part two of our series about these people are the body of Jesus. And the reason that we need to discuss this is because judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Let me say that again. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Too many people who call themselves Christians have forgotten that God judges those outside the church, but it's for those inside the church that we're supposed to be judging. And judgment is coming to the house of the Lord. So many people forget that what calls itself the church today is not the true church. The true church is within that church, but right now we have wheat and we have tares growing up alongside of each other, and nobody wants to call out the problem with letting the tares take over and set the agenda for how the church is going to present themselves while ministering to the lost, to ministering to the rest of the world as Jesus called us to do. Everybody wants to play this like, oh, well, both sides have pro No, both sides don't have problems. We have the true church, and then we have a whole lot of tares pretending to be the church because it is beneficial to their social standing, their economic activities, whatever. But I am so sick and tired of the body of Christ hemorrhaging believers because they have been taken captive by tares who tell them, this is how you have to be a Christian. This is the way to be a Christian. And it has nothing to do with scripture and everything to do with the worldly governments of this fallen world. It is time to call it out by name. None of this both sides is, of, oh, well, we just don't want to be offended or we don't want to offend other people. And we you know we just don't want to be judgmental. God judges those outside. It's for us to judge those inside of the church. So many people are never going to hear the message of the gospel because they're they have been hardened. Their ears are hardened. Their eyes are hardened to the gospel based on the behavior of people calling themselves Christians. And this is why we're talking about it because I am sick. I am sick and tired of being told that if you are a true Christian, then you can't vote for any other party than the Republican party. And I'm here to tell you full disclosure. I was a Republican up until 2020 and at, at 2020, I was like, I have had enough. I've had enough because scripture tells us to test yourself, to see if you're even in the faith and the things that this party is doing, the things that they are espousing goes directly against my beliefs as a Christian, as somebody who follows Christ, the policies that they're putting in place directly go against the words of Jesus. So how can I associate with them when no other party, the Democrats, Libertarians, Green Party, whoever, they're not coming and saying, hey, this party is doing the will of Jesus. This is part of the Christian party. This is a, a party that is enacting traditional biblical morals. Nobody else is doing that except the Republicans. They're doing this in the name of Jesus and what they're doing directly goes against the commands of Jesus. It is wrong and we have to call them out. And because they're doing this in the name of Jesus, the way of truth is being defamed. People are not listening to the gospel because they're saying, if you're saying that Christianity is Republicanism, I want nothing to do with it. Jesus wasn't a Republican. Jesus wasn't an American. Jesus had nothing to do with the founding fathers who were Unitarians and deists and wanted to get as far away as possible from the Church of England and Christianity as they possibly could. This is why everything is like Masonic themed in Washington, D.C. This is why they specifically spoke out against Jesus as God. And this is why I am so sick and tired of this mythos that people have come up with that if we simply just vote for the body of Jesus, we'll have this magical Christian utopia and everything will be wonderful. When it is a complete lie, Jesus himself said, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. And as Christians who have been adopted into God's family... We are awaiting a city whose foundations were built by God because one day,
the kingdom of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. This world will pass away. This world will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's words will never pass away. This is why when it comes down to it, we have to remember that our allegiance first and foremost belongs to God. All other allegiances are secondary to our allegiance to Christ Jesus. So if our political party has us swearing allegiance to them and making us compromise our Christian beliefs and say, okay, well, I'm just going to completely ignore everything the scripture says so that I can support you as you do these things in the name of Jesus. Let's remember, this is the key thing about living in a fallen world. There's always going to be politicians out there and parties that do not align with the Bible on a hundred percent of their politics. But I don't know any other party here in the United States that has the clout, that has the power that the Republican Party has, and they do all of these things in the name of Jesus. That's the difference. You are compromising on your actual beliefs, the commands of Jesus Christ to follow a doctrine of demons being promoted by people who claim that they're doing these things in the name of Jesus. It is wrong. It is absolutely wrong. And this is why we have to call them out. So in part one, we discussed how when people are confronted with scripture, when they're confronted with the Bible, that Jesus doesn't want just some happy songs and then you can go about living however you want to live and you can just be a horrible person to people. No, Jesus wants you to be his hands and feet here on earth. And that includes getting down in the trenches and doing things that aren't popular, doing things that makes you interact with people that you don't like, making you reevaluate your flesh, making you die to yourself every day. I have to crucify my flesh because it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. If we're going to crucify our flesh, we can't have our allegiance be to the Republican Party. It has to be to Christ Jesus. It can't be to capitalism. It can't be to anybody but Christ Jesus. You cannot serve God and money. Who, who's it going to be? Are you going to serve capitalist interests and big business or are you going to serve Christ Jesus? What is it going to be? What is it going to be? Because when people were confronted with, hey, Jesus wants us to feed the hungry, to give them water, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick, to visit those who are in prison, to care for the widows, the orphans, the foreigners. What do people say? Oh, well, look, that sounds liberal. That sounds like communist Marxist socialism. That's the words of Jesus right there. And everybody can come up with a million excuses for why they don't want to follow the commands of Jesus. And one thing that people will do, as we talked about in part one, is they'll say, okay, well, I understand that the Republican Party is directly oppressing the very people Jesus called us to care for in Matthew 25. I understand that, but nobody's perfect. So, you know, the reason I'm really voting for these Republicans is because, and then they'll list off a bunch of policies. So in part one, what did we talk about? We talked about how they'll say, oh, well, you know, I'll, I can ignore how they completely oppress the very people Jesus called us to care for, but I'm still going to vote for the body of Jesus based off of their stance on homosexuality. And we saw, hey, when we actually line that up with the Bible, hey, their policy does not match scripture. So we throw that out. So if you're voting for them for that reason, it's not because you're a Christian. And then we talked about uh, the Republican Party's stance on debt relief and student loans. And we lined that up with the Bible. We saw how that didn't match up. So you throw it out. Then we talked about how there is so much hypocrisy, not only with the debt relief, but on people saying, well, I'm going to vote for them because of uh, their stance on limited small government and lack of uh, government overreach into your life and for freedom. And we debunked all of those things. Every single one of those things we debunked in part one. And then we also discussed how these people will say, oh, well, the unborn, I'm, I'm voting for them because I care about the unborn. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because your policies 
not only don't support life, we also see that in places where, like, for example, Colorado, we discussed how uh, when it came to teen pregnancies, they implemented a birth control program where they gave girls who are teenagers birth control that is long lasting, such as like an IUD. So you're not having to take it every day, but it is reversible. And they saw the teen pregnancy rate cut in half. They saw the teen abortion rate cut in half and they saved taxpayers nearly $70 million in welfare funding that they didn't have to spend because these women never became pregnant. And what happened? Did the Christian right, the body of Jesus, did they say, oh, thank God that less abortions are happening? No, what did they do? They scrapped the program. So I don't want to hear about how, oh, they just care so much about life. They don't care about life before you're born, and they definitely don't care about life after you're born, as we see with their policies. So let's discuss a few more of these policies that people will say, okay, well, I can, I can ignore the fact that they oppress the very people that Jesus called us to care for. And I understand that they're hypocrites and liars on all the things that you mentioned, such as limited government, freedom, lack of government overreach, homosexuality, and we started to touch on the unborn. But what's one other thing that they'll always bring up? They'll talk about, oh, well, freedom and safety. They'll always say peace and safety when there is no peace or safety, right? So one thing that I've noticed is that people who claim to be part of the body of Jesus will talk about like, oh, there's these boogeymen out here because if I don't vote for the body of Jesus, then we're not going to have law enforcement. We won't have police because the Democrats want to get rid of the police. And it's just like, can we be any more dishonest here? Can we possibly be any more dishonest? And it, it drives me crazy because again, when I say that the Republican Party is not the party of Jesus, I'm not saying the Democrats, Libertarians, Green Party, anybody else is the party of Jesus. They all have issues, right? But what I am saying is that when it comes to the body of Jesus, it's full of hypocrites, liars, 0% of their policies line up with scripture while they do all of this stuff in the name of Jesus. These other parties, they don't do their policies in the name of Jesus. And yet many of their policies, not all, of course, there's not a single political party out there that is representing the Bible full stop. So the, the difference is, is that all of these other parties, some of their policies actually do line up with scripture. Not all of them, some of them do. The Republican party, zero of them do. It is so dishonest when the body of Jesus says, okay, I can ignore all of this, but the reason that I'm voting for them is because if I don't vote for the body of Jesus, then we won't have law enforcement. Who will we call in the case of an emergency? Because if I vote for anybody else, they're going to defund the police. And it's like, this is so dishonest and deceptive. Because when you actually listen to the words of politicians who aren't part of the body of Jesus, you see that. No, they're not saying, let's get rid of all law enforcement. For example, our Democrat president, Joe Biden, is talking about funding the police. I know it works. Investigating crime prevention and community policing. Cops who walk the beat, who know the neighborhood, and who can restore trust and safety. Let's not abandon our streets or choose between safety and equal justice. Let's come together and protect our communities, restore trust, and hold law enforcement accountable. That's why the Justice Department has required body cameras, banned choke calls, and restricted no-knox warrants for its officers. That's why the American Rescue Plan that you all provided $350 billion that cities, states, and counties can use to hire more police, invest in more proven strategies. <clears throat> Proven strategies like <laughs> proven strategies like community violence interruption, trusted messengers breaking the cycle of violence and trauma, and giving young people some hope. We should all agree the answer is not to defund the police; it's to fund the police. <laughs> fund them. Fund them.
Fund them with resources and training. Resources and training they need to protect our communities. I ask Democrats and Republicans alike to pass my budget and keep our neighborhoods safe. But, 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 Ms. Congressman Banks, let me push back on that a little bit because in the program that he announced this week, the, the president said that the central part of his anti crime package is the $350 billion in the American Rescue Plan, the COVID relief plan that was passed. Take a look at what the president said. It means more police officers, more nurses, more counselors, more social workers, more community violence interrupters to help resolve issues before they escalate into crimes. Congressman Banks, you voted against that package, against that $350 billion, just like every other Republican in the House and Senate. So can't you make the argument that it's you and the Republicans who are defunding the police? So it's just incredibly deceptive. And then people will point to these other cities that are run by Democrats and they'll say, well, they're talking about defunding the police. And I'm going to say one thing. The the phrase defund the police is horrible optics. It's a stupid phrase, but I guess it's more catchy and gets more headlines that get more outrage that leads to more clicks and ad revenue than we're going to rearrange our law enforcement budgets to see where we can pull money from so that we can reinvest it into more police training and crime prevention. I guess that's too long of a phrase than defund the police. We always hear, oh, San Francisco, they're so liberal. And they have a Democrat mayor, they have a Democrat governor. And what do we see? Mayor London Breed announced plans to redirect $120 million from the city's law enforcement budget to investments in the black community. An investigation from San Francisco Weekly found that the defunding, quote unquote, never actually happened as law enforcement spending increased and funding for new investments came from other sources. So some of these projects, they say, oh, well, we were interested in doing this project. Maybe we can pull money from this budget. But actually, that defunding never took place because the money came from an other source. And then we go on to see the sheriff's office, the district attorney's office, and the probation departments all saw increased budgets. While the San Francisco Police Department did see a slight cut in its budget, San Francisco Weekly reported that those cuts can nearly all be attributed to decreased demand for police at the airport. Well, what was going on in 2020 that would lead to decreased demand at the airport? Uh, I don't know, a lockdown, Uh, a global pandemic, perhaps. So you're not spending as much on policing at the airport because people aren't traveling to the airport. You're not defunding the police. It's just supply and demand. There's not a demand for police at the airport. So they've cut that part of the budget. But then we see that in the following fiscal year, the city projects the police budget will increase once again to $689 million, which is close to the police budget's all-time high of $692 million from two years prior. So, we see when it comes to cities like San Francisco, are they getting rid of their police force? No, they're not. No, they're not. They're simply having a discussion on where can we rearrange our budget so that we don't have to raise money on taxpayers to fund more police training so that when police and civilians interact, we don't have instances where people are dying, where we are paying out millions and millions of dollars in wrongful death suits. Surely we would like to uh, save taxpayer money from all of these lawsuits that come about due to the lack of training that officers in the United States, well, I mean, they just don't have it. Do you know there's like 37 states where you can be a cop without ever even going to the police academy first? In Hawaii, you never have to. In other states, you can practice 12 months, 24 months, and never have gone to the police academy. And the United States has some of the lowest amount of training hours that 
anybody has to complete to become a police officer here in the United States. On average, it's about 500 hours. In Portugal, it's over 10,000. So, yeah. Not only is it a flat out lie to say that, oh, well, if we don't vote for the body of Jesus, then we won't have law enforcement officers. Not only is that a lie, we see that every accusation is a confession when it comes to these body of Jesus hypocrites because they'll sit there and they'll say, oh, oh my gosh, the Democrats, they're going to defund the police. Meanwhile, when... And let's remember, Jesus says you cannot show partiality. God is not a respecter of persons. There has to be one law for the foreign born and the native. We see that they want special treatment. They want to be allowed to commit crimes willy nilly and not be held accountable. And then when federal law enforcement starts investigating Republicans for things like treason, espionage, trafficking, theft, all sorts of financial crimes. All of a sudden, it's the party of Jesus members who are calling for the defunding of federal law enforcement agencies and to scrap these agencies altogether. It's complete hypocrisy. If they won't stop this ridiculous witch hunt on President Trump and his former administration and staff and supporters, then what has to happen is in a Republican majority, we have to defund and make cuts in the Department of Justice. And we can do that on how many employees they're allowed to have. Um, we can say that funds can only go for towards like uh prosecution of sex trafficking or human trafficking or or drugs coming across our across our state lines or different crimes like that serious crimes and then completely cut out of their budget the ability uh, to persecute republicans basically People whose whole identity is being a member of the body of Jesus will conveniently ignore all of the things that we've talked about. And then they'll come up with this excuse, excuse number two for part two. And they'll say, well, it's just, it's so much safer living in a place that's governed by the body of Jesus. And that is why I'm voting for the Republicans. And we crunch the numbers when we actually look at the facts because facts don't care about your feelings. We find out that's a lie. Because is it safer to live in a place where it's run by the party of Jesus? No, it's not. Because we had an election, a presidential election in 2020. And let's look at the murder rates in 2020. When we compare states that voted for the Republican, Trump, as their nominee in the 2020 presidential election, their murder rates were 40% higher than states that voted for Joe Biden, the Democrat, in that presidential election. 40% higher in the Republican voting states. 40%. And then we look at the country as a whole, and we see that the places that have the highest murder rate in the whole country are all in states that are part of the Bible Belt. The Bible Belt, where people vote the Bible and their whole identity is in Christ Jesus. It's not. It's in the Republican Party and being a horrible person to other people with a smile on your face. I grew up in the Bible Belt. I was born in the Bible Belt. My family's from the Bible Belt. And the Bible Belt's bad theology is why this channel exists. I grew up with much of this bad theology and this is why this channel exists, to call it out. So don't tell me that I don't know about the Bible Belt. Eight out of ten states with the highest murder rate, not only did they vote for the Republican presidential candidate in 2020's election, they have voted for the Republican nominee in every presidential election this century. And not only that, you constantly hear, whether it's conservative media or Christian media, about, oh my goodness, these Democrat hellholes, Marxist, communist, socialist hellholes full of murder, sin, and vice, such as New York City and Los Angeles. There's just so much sin, so much crime. And it's like, why is it that I'm constantly hearing about their murder rate when New York City has a murder rate of 5.7%? And Los Angeles has a murder rate of 6.4. Yet somehow I never hear about the party of Jesus run states and cities that have a higher murder rate than New York City and Los Angeles 
by multiples. So, again, New York City, 5.7. I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Their murder rate is 19.64. 19.64. How many of y'all are hearing about Tulsa, Oklahoma being just a, a city filled with murder? I, I don't hear that. I don't hear that. But I constantly hear blathering on about, oh my gosh, New York City, Los Angeles. Um, what? And then people will say, oh, well, okay, not New York, not, not Los Angeles. What about Chicago? What about Houston? Let's remember that Houston is in Republican Texas, okay? And not only that, with their murder rate in Houston, it's 17.32. And the mayor of Houston has called for more gun reform because you can't have a city that has like very strict laws and then, well, you can just go outside the city and get those same guns, okay? Because guns are what drives murder in the U.S. And that's what we need to talk about when we talk about places like Chicago. People want to point to Chicago, oh, these failed policies of these demonic communists. They're not even a communist party like it's ridiculous but anyway chicago's murder rate is 28.49 that is not acceptable but then we see let's talk about the third reason why it's not safe living in a body of jesus state like we just talked about houston is in texas texas has very relaxed gun laws extremely relaxed Likewise, Chicago is right next to Republican Indiana. People live in Indiana and then drive to work in Chicago. That's how close Chicago is to Indiana. Indiana has extremely lax gun laws. There are higher rates of mass shootings in states with more relaxed gun control. Common sense. More access to guns, more people are going to use those guns. States like Texas and Indiana, and there's a ton of these states, have extremely relaxed gun laws. And then they make laws where municipalities that want to have more restrictions or at least more checks and balances to make sure that these weapons aren't getting in the hands of people who aren't supposed to have these weapons to begin with, their hands are tied. They're not allowed to because that's infringing upon freedom, even though the Supreme Court has already ruled that these laws are constitutional. So there's no point in even arguing it. Are you familiar with a straw purchase? A straw purchase is where a person will travel to an area that has very relaxed gun control restrictions or none at all, and they'll purchase a weapon for somebody in a state or a city where they would not be allowed to legally purchase that same weapon, whether it's because they're a felon or they're on a terrorist watch list or something like that. Um, so they will have somebody go out and purchase it for them in these Republican states. And when we look at the weapons recovered from crime scenes, we see that in Chicago, the guns are coming from Indiana. And it's not just Chicago. We see places like Canada, where they have much more stringent gun control laws. Guns recovered from crimes in places like Toronto. 86% of the guns recovered in crimes in Toronto were from the United States. So you have places that have very relaxed gun control laws. And they are sent to other places that have stricter gun control. And that's a problem because we all need to be on the same page together because you can't try to stop the hemorrhaging while you have holes right next to you that you can't plug. You can't say that you're for safety, peace and safety and more family values and two parent homes and then say we're not going to have any restrictions on who can access these life ending weapons. We want no restrictions. So it's just constantly hemorrhaging the lives of mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sons and daughters. You can't say that you're for this. Oh, I'm for family, for family and then support zero restrictions on firearm ownership. You just can't. They, they don't work because lax gun control regulations lead directly to more deaths. 
We see that in the United States compared to all these other countries where people still have domestic violence issues, they still have theft issues, they still have gang violence, but we see our homicide rates are huge compared to comparable countries that are Western countries. We are a Western nation here in the United States. So when we compare it to places like the EU, to the UK, to Australia, like it's even to India, <laughs> like literally our murder rate is just, whew, it's huge. And when more guns are available, more people are going to use them. And of course, more men are the victim of homicides. But we also need to discuss, if we care so much about women and babies, let's talk about how domestic violence victims are usually shot in this country. They're usually murdered through a gun. Relaxed laws regarding guns makes it unsafe for women and children to live in this country because one third of all women who are murdered in this country are murdered by a male partner who lives in the South, in the Bible Belt. One third, one third of all murdered women are murdered by a male partner who lives in the South. I thought this was the body of Jesus land and everybody's covered in prayer and everybody acts according to the precepts of scripture. It's a complete lie because none of these policies that the body of Jesus enacts lead to actual fruit being produced by people. There is no fruit of the spirit being produced. It's more crime, more murder, more death, more terrible outcomes for people living in the Bible Belt. Are you aware of what the boyfriend loophole is? This is a gap in legislation that allows men who are boyfriends or the unmarried partner of a woman that they are physically abusing or stalking and they have prior convictions, they are still allowed to access firearms. There is no um, rule in place that prevents them from accessing firearms despite prior convictions. So they can be physically abusive and stalking, one or both, and they can still access firearms. In the state of Georgia, in the Bible Belt, they don't even require that firearms be removed when there's a domestic violence call at the scene of a domestic violence incident. So you have a couple, and it's something's going down, and there's weapons that are visible. They, they're not required to remove them from the premise. This is why people are dying. This is why people are dying, because these ridiculous laws, they serve to protect nobody but abusers, nobody but the gun industry, nobody but the prison industrial complex. And do we ever hear Christians talk about it? I sure have not. We're going to wrap up episode two, but best believe we are going to continue to call out the hypocrisy of voting for the party of Jesus when they completely ignore scripture. And then we see that they don't even line up like their words don't match their actions when it comes to all of these various causes that they claim to support mainly which we will be getting into is, oh, they care for the unborn and the lives and they're just so pro-life. We see that's not true. We see that is a lie. You're prioritizing unrestricted access to firearms over that of human lives. And I say this as a firearm owner, as my husband owns firearms, my parents own firearms, my grandparents own firearms. So don't tell me that, oh, oh, well, you just don't like firearms. I'm saying... You can't have unrestricted access to firearms and then claim that you're pro-life. Oh, we can't have any laws. We can't have any background checks. We can't have any sort of uh, registries to know who even has these weapons and then claim that you're pro-life. Don't tell me, don't lie to my face because all liars have their place in the lake of fire. Don't tell me that you're pro-life and you're for the golden age of Christianity where women somehow never worked but they stayed home and raised their babies in this mythological time period that never existed. Don't say that you're for 
women and children when one of the leading causes of death in pregnant women and women who have just given birth, so postpartum women, is murder. Is murder. So a woman who is pregnant or has just given birth, one of the most likely causes of her death is going to be murder. And then we've looked at statistics that a woman is most likely to be murdered with a firearm. And the woman who is murdered is most likely to be murdered by an intimate male partner who lives in the South, in the Bible Belt. So don't tell me how you're so pro-family, you're so pro-life, that you care about children and two-parent families because it's a lie. That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Do not vote for these people. Do not vote for these people. Do not vote for the party of Jesus. It does not make you a leftist to vote for a Democrat, a Libertarian, a Green Party member. Or if you live outside of the United States, I'm sure there's other parties out there that you can apply this to when you look at the numbers. Christians, this cannot continue. We are losing our ability to witness effectively to the world when we hold up the Republican Party as the Christian standard rather than the Word of God. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share. Love you guys lots. Bye.